Welcome to your general affinity training. By the end of this session, you'll have a good understanding of the basics, including your network, search, profiles, privacy, notes, lists, and our Google and Outlook apps. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with all organizations. When your team accesses all organizations, they'll see all of the entities for which the team has had email correspondence with, along with associated metadata. This section becomes a great way to keep track of your relationships, who's working with who, and information on those companies. Let's say you're coming off of a three-day weekend and you'd like to get a sense of what net new relationships have we made the week before. For this, we can use the customize wrench button and here we'll see all the fields that we have available to us. Global fields, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail shortly, and rich fields primarily coming from your email and calendar, from graphic information, funding information, growth information, as well as data from our partners, Crunchbase and DealRoom. You may be thinking to yourself, well, what's the best data source for us? Generally, we recommend leveraging affinity data as much as possible because there are no restrictions when it comes to exporting or using analytics. However, with Crunchbase as an example, they're on a credit-based system, and so you won't be able to export or use their data in our analytics tool. With that said, these tools have different strengths and weaknesses. Crunchbase tends to have better data in NORAM, where Deer Room has pretty robust data in Europe and abroad. But definitely try out the affinity data either way, given the considerations I mentioned. So for the example that I described, let's head up to the enrich fields here. We'll want to pull in first email. This has already been toggled, which is great. We'll come into visible. And now we can drag this field up in our view. As you can see that move that over. And now let's sort on this field by most recent interactions or newest first. And now you'll see all of the companies for which we've had email correspondence with most recently as a team, indicating that it's probably a newer relationship. We can streamline this data a bit by individual using this filter interactions button. Rather than seeing all of the relationships that our entire team has, has made, we can just filter this down by a specific person, meaning Ram was on the conversation, he was on the email thread. And so this may help you get a good sense of who you personally had an interaction with and who you may need to take action on now this new week is beginning. One of the things that I mentioned was taking action on these companies once we got the filter in the way that we wanted it. We filtered and we sorted on a particular person's interactions and we sorted by net new email interactions. So let's say we wanted to take action on this ING company. To do this, we're gonna to wanna to put them in a list. We'll talk about lists in a bit more detail shortly, but for now, just know lists are a means of managing entities through specific processes or stage gates. They can also act as a further curation of your total network, perhaps just for companies in your deal flow list. So let's say we wanted to put ING in our deal flow list. We can click on this button right next to them, copy to list, and search for the appropriate list. One proprietary field that our clients often find quite valuable is this connections field. It aims to tell you who knows who and how well do we know them. We've got different color codings in our system based on the connection strength of the relationship. If I click in here, you're gonna see exactly how we know the person and a score that we assign based on recency, frequency, and cadence of interactions. The connections are color coded, so green indicates a very high connection strength, gray indicating a lower connection or no connection at all, meaning there hasn't been a lot of email or calendar correspondence, and then orange if the connection is sort of in between those two. Thus far, we've discussed two key value tenets of affinity. One, automation. We're creating profiles for all the organizations and people directly from your email. Second, relationship intelligence. We're providing information on who knows who and how well do you know them, as well as metadata on all of the organizations and people in your email. A third key value tenant is in customization. 
Whenever you make a change to an affinity view, whether it be a filter, a sort, moving around fields, this red dot will appear next to the save button. If I click on this red dot, it gives you two options. You can choose to overwrite the changes, meaning you're overwriting the existing view, or you can duplicate the view, meaning you can create an entirely new view, perhaps for a bespoke process. Maybe you have a particular vantage point that you personally like to see rather than the entire team. Let's take that as an example. I'll call it demo test. And now we've got a new demo test view with the first email field moved over. If I come back to this view and I revert back to the last saved view configuration, you'll see that now the first email is in this column position, whereas in our demo test view, the first email is in this column position next to industry. By default, duplicated views are private to the individual that created them. However, if you'd like to share out the view, you can click on this lock button and share the view and choose if you'd like others to configure the view on your behalf as well. The last views that you've opened will remain opened as tabs when you revisit this page at the top here. You can also access any views on the left-hand pane and scroll down to the one that you're interested in. You can pin different views, meaning everyone on the team will have this view uh, pinned to the top of their screen here. You can favorite the view, meaning it'll be pinned to the top just for you. You can copy a link to the view to send it across to others, or you can delete the view here. Now let's say that a company has reached out to you and you'd like to see if it's worth it to take a meeting. You want to know what the history has been with your colleagues. For this, we can search for the company profile. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is head down to the activity timeline. The activity timeline has all of the email and calendar interactions with this company, as well as a lot of other activity types. You can see that on this filter activity button here of all the different activities that you can see in the timeline. You can also filter down by these. You can filter by particular colleagues that the conversation was with or by timeline. What appears in the activity timeline is based on the personal privacy settings that are configured for each individual. Now at the enterprise level, there are some special enterprise permissions that you can set up as a team. If you fall into that camp, let's talk about that separately. As it relates to personal privacy settings, however, let's take a quick segue there. And so if I click on personal privacy here, you're going to see the different options that are available to each team member. You can choose to hide all of your email and meeting content so that they just show up as sort of placeholders with the participants and the timestamps. Just so subject lines or show all email and meeting content, including the bodies. Typically I've seen this used for, you know, smaller teams. In addition, if there are any individuals in particular that you'd like to hide from the platform, a doctor, a lawyer, a friend that you've emailed from the email address that's connected to Affinity, you can always list them in here and those individuals will be hidden. Automatic file upload, what this is going to do is allow you the option to automatically share files with your team based on if an entity shows up on a particular list. So again, we'll talk about lists in a bit more detail shortly, but just know that we'll have a list of companies or people. And if any of those companies or people message you a file, that will be available to you in Affinity. However, it will not be available to the rest of the team. Adding the list 
that those companies are on to this automatic file upload will allow that file to be available to the rest of the team, will allow them to see that information without you necessarily needing to take action. While we're in settings, I should note the notifications as well. You can always choose if you want any of these email notifications or web app notifications turned on or off here. You know, we try and make these as useful for you as possible. However, if that's not the case, you know, feel free to amend those settings here. Now we've taken a look at the activity timeline. Maybe we look at our connections. We talk to who we know internally to see if it's worth it to have a meeting with Affinity. Great things to say about Affinity. They're a great company. They're going places. We decide to take the meeting. So what do we want to do? We want to get into the habit of taking notes in Affinity. So you can easily do this by searching for the note, adding the note here, and then publishing it. You can quickly find the relevant meetings by using the filter activity we spoke about before. Or you can take a note quickly from this window here. It just won't have that context of the meeting that you saw at the top there. Taking notes is super easy in Affinity. You could do it from anywhere in the platform. It doesn't need to be directly from the profile. You could click add new here, add note, and you can add multiple entities to a note at once. So if you were to take a note, you can apply it to multiple organizations or people seamlessly at once. You can tag anyone you want to let them know that a note has been taken. Maybe some action needs to be taken. Once you publish that note, you'll see it up here. You could always reply to it if you know, there's some action item on here. Talk about next steps. And then folks can see a thread of, you know, what, sort of what's transpired from the meeting, from next steps, from action items, etc. Now let's talk about lists. Lists are a means of managing the organizations and people in your network as they move through some stage gate process. There are three types of lists in Affinity. Organizational lists, typically used to track deal flow and portfolio companies. People lists, typically used to track recruitment and events. And opportunities, which are typically used for things like fundraising. Opportunities are totally distinct entities from organizations and people. They can be projects or really anything you like. There are more customizable lists with a little less automation than the first two. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail shortly. To create a new list in Affinity, start by hitting this button here. This will open up all the templates that we have to offer. We have organizational list templates, people list templates, and opportunity list templates. Within the templates, you'll see fields that have already been configured for you. Sometimes, however, you may want to start from scratch. In this case, we can scroll to the bottom, click build from scratch, select the list type, give the list a name, and select the stage gates that are appropriate for this process. Then click create. Now let's look at an example organizational list, a deals list to be precise. And so I've created this example deals list for my own purposes, for demonstration purposes, but when you get into your list, you're gonna to wanna to configure the views to meet your team's needs and your own needs. And so for that, you can click this customize view button. You can bring in list specific fields, which are fields unique to this list. It's only accessible in this list. And the data is unique to each row. There's global fields, which are available everywhere on the platform. And the data is the same, no matter where that company and field live. Of course, there's the enriched and firmographic and other enhanced data that we spoke about before. For this example, let's create a new list specific field and a new global field so that you can see the way it works in action. So I'll click this plus button here. I'll give this a drop down. Let's do investment round test. We'll add that field. And then we'll add a global field called sector 
test five. Make this a global field. We'll start with a single value for now, but I'll also show you what multi-value means. And so now these two fields have been brought into view. I'll bring them up. And so a great way to understand list specific versus global is in an example where you need to add the same company twice to a list. Now, why might you do that? Well, you might engage a company in series A, have a particular data set for that round, things like investment amount, the valuation, the round itself. That's going to be different than the next time you engage with the company. All those numbers and information will be different. Maybe the past reason the first time will not apply to the past reason the second time, or perhaps the second time you'll actually make an investment. So let's see how this plays out. Let's add com again here. And for this first one, we can say series A. And when you add data to a dropdown, it's going to add it to the options. And you can add a couple more options if you want. Now we've got a little drop down list here with series A and series B. We'll put the sector in, let's just say AI. Do machine learning too. And what you see is with the global field, I put AI in here and it automatically added it to this row as well. And that's because this is a global field, meaning anywhere this field is located, the data for that organizational entity is the same. Didn't happen for this list specific field. In this case, maybe we want this to be series B instead. And so now when you add values as it pertains to your engagements with these companies during these rounds, such as amount, maybe the investment amount the first time was 500 or 50K, next time it's 600K, now we can maintain historical information as we move forward. Now, you don't have to manage your list like this. Some of our clients do. The upshot is that we're seeing the distinction here between global and list specific fields and how that manifests in an example like this. And now that we've added some fields here, you see this red dot appear next to the save button again. So we can create a new view here. And this view will now be available on the top pane here, as well as on the left-hand pane under views. By default, that view saved as private. Of course, you can share it out if you want to by clicking here, and you can allow others to configure the view on your behalf if you'd like. We can also change this, as I alluded to before, to a multi-value field, in which case you just add the multi-value. You see machine learning was added there as well. It's got multiple tags. Now that we've added this information, we want to manage this relationship as it moves through our funnel. And so for this, we're going to use the status field. You can come into the status field and edit the nomenclature of these fields. You can edit the colors, the order. You can move them into different buckets from one loss on hold, etc. But once all of that's in place, now let's say this is a new deal. We're going to move it into the term sheet phase. If I click here, you can see who made the change, when the change was made, what was the prior stage before moving into this existing stage, and how long it took to get there. This is going to create actionable intelligence for you, particularly for those of you that have our premium and enterprise accounts for analytics. You're going to get actionable intelligence. We can create visualizations to help you better manage your pipeline. Another view that our customers often utilize is our board view or Kanban view. And to access that, you'll notice a slightly different symbol here for these views. And this just gives you a visual representation of your deals. A lot of our customers will use this during Monday morning stand-up meetings just to talk through where deals are at. Again, totally customizable. If you click on any of these squares, you can take notes on the company right from here. You can move things around. 
you can add data points as makes sense. So maybe I'll do first email here and you can see this first email field appears. You can collapse these. And of course you can save these views. Any of those views you save again will show up here. And we've got these three options. You can pin views, which will pin them to the top for the entire team. Those are the organizational list basics. Next, we'll talk about opportunity lists. Opportunities are great when you need a bit more customization to the entities that you're managing. If you recall, when we were working with organizational lists, those were all companies. However, opportunities are completely distinct entities, which you can build associations to organizations and people. In this way, you can select the specific organizations and people that are relevant to the opportunity rather than tracking everyone that you might know at the organization. Specific use cases that I've seen work well with opportunity lists are fundraising or projects of some sort. For example, let's say that you are working with Goldman Sachs on a fundraising opportunity, but specifically you're working with their real estate group. For this, we could come in here, we can type in Goldman real estate. You can see that we've added Goldman Real Estate here, but none of the people have pre-populated. You can also see that the last contact and first email and rich columns have not populated because that field is based on this people field. In addition, since we haven't filled in the organizational field, none of the other enriched fields will be populated either. However, once I start to add this information, we'll get that enrichment. And now that I've added an organizational entity, we'll give you suggestions for people that you may want to add to this opportunity. When you add people to opportunities, it takes a few moments for the last contact, first email, and other enriched contact fields to populate. You can see that our description and industry field, enriched organizational fields, were populated once we filled in that organizational field with Goldman Sachs. Now you've seen the customization that's available to us by adding these people here and adding the organization. And what this has done has built associations to Goldman Sachs and these individuals to the opportunity. And so if I were to click on the Goldman Sachs profile entity, you'll see a Goldman Sachs opportunity listed under the opportunities here. You can also see the relevant data that was in that opportunity list, including the people that are associated with it. However, keep in mind that this profile is totally distinct from the Goldman real estate opportunity in our Tyler's LP fundraising example. If I click here, where you'll see the interactions for specifically Justin and McKenna, as opposed to all of Goldman Sachs. In addition, this becomes a place you can take notes specifically on the Goldman real estate opportunity. And this will not apply to the Goldman Sachs organizational profile card. So now you can see this test note has applied here. And if I come back to the organizational profile card, you'll see that that note has not applied to this profile. Similarly, Justin and McKenna will also have their own profiles. But note, if you take a note on this profile, that note will also appear here because Justin is associated with the Goldman Sachs real estate opportunity, as you can see here. Ultimately, opportunity lists have less automation and a bit more customization than our other lists. That said, stage gate management ends up being quite similar with the status field, where you can manage your stage gate processes via this status field and see that historical data that we've spoken about in the past. While we're here, another feature you might be interested in are our triggers. If we head over to list options and hit triggers, we've got reminder triggers and status triggers. For minor triggers, you can set up parameters to ensure that your team follows up within a certain amount of time. With status triggers, 
You can require certain fields if a certain stage gate is selected. So for example, lost might prompt one to add a lost reason. And that looks like this. Similarly, with opportunity triggers, you can set up statuses for which a new opportunity will be created once that status has been triggered. So now if we move this into first meeting, it's going to prompt you to create a new opportunity on a new list. An example where I've seen this used is when cold outreach turns into a real opportunity. That's the overview of the Affinity web platform. Next, we're gonna focus on our extensions, Pathfinder, and our Outlook add-in. Your contacts and deals already live in your CRM, but that's not where you do your work. With Affinity's Pathfinder Chrome extension, you can uncover and capture new information about an investment or M&A opportunity, update deals, and take relationship intelligence with you anywhere. Research potential investments quickly with data that you use to assess deals automatically displayed when you visit a website. Update your CRM with deal insights. And move to your next opportunity without missing a beat. Pathfinder helps you capture and share new information into the Affinity CRM directly from where you do your research so you can confidently begin your deal sourcing work. Pathfinder also ensures these details aren't lost to your inbox. You can view all of the people, companies, and a timeline of your previous interactions from an email thread, update a deal status, save a full email thread as a note, and fill related fields with new data and moments so anyone working a deal has the context they need. Research startups and clients, update your CRM, and find the path to your next deal. Thanks so much for watching. That's all for now. We'll speak with you soon.